Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Geek Authority's Mysterious Chamber of Collectibles, where I, Lorenzo Marchese, show you some of the stuff that I have. In this particular episode, I'm going to kind of go quick because I'm really uh, a big fan of props. I love props uh, from all different genres and, and different kinds of science fiction shows and fantasy shows and such. And some I've made, some I've purchased, some I've gotten on eBay, um, and I'll just start uh, right away. Well, for those of you who are fans of uh, science fiction, I'll just give you an idea of what kind of kits are available. You can get them on eBay. Sometimes they're on Amazon. Um, if you check, uh, just go to the Google it, you'll find some places that do specialty stuff. But here's an example of a kit. Um, this is a kit from a movie called Logan's Run. Starred Michael York and Jenny Ed Gutter. Came out in 1976, one of my favorite films. And just to give you an idea, um, this is, these are particular parts that come uh, molded. Some are printed uh, on printers. Some are actually cast by uh, uh, hard resin. Um, this particular one is cast by hard resin. And I'm, I'm having options of, uh, you know, doing uh, barrels and things. Uh, once you assemble it, then you prime it, then you paint it, and then you detail it. And uh, finished products can look amazing. I'll show you some of the, some of the concepts and things that I put together. So that's Logan's Run. Uh, let's jump over to, uh, let's do first edition of Star Wars. Well, everyone knows that's one of the majority of the uh, props that are real popular are, of course, the lightsaber. Uh, this, this blade is green, so it's probably disappearing. Uh, for, uh, actually, it's causing me to disappear because the green light is shining back on me. See the difference? Uh, so if I turn it off, poof, I come back. Turn it on. Ooh, uh, anyway, um, lightsaber with a gorgeous handle. The buttons that turn on and off and so on and so forth. Um, we know that's a fantastic Star Wars prop. Um, the new movie, Rise of Skywalker, the latest movie, I should say, um, episode, blah, 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 whatever, um, introduced a new lightsaber. And let me pull it out here. And this is um, Ray's brand new one. Um, I believe this was printed on a printer, so it's kind of a, a hard plastic. Um, it's got uh, features that include. Um, this, these six little doors that open up on top, if you can see, um, where the blade would come out. But this doesn't have a blade. This was just because patterned after the movie Rise of Skywalker at the very last scene when when um, Ray pulls it out after saying she's a, my name is Ray Skywalker, um, and this is hers. So uh, I need to paint it. There's it's gold and silver, a little bit of yellow. Um, and that's uh, one of the projects that I'm working on now. Um, same with the Logan Run gun, which I just showed you. Um, working on the barrels and such. Okay, let's jump to uh, let's jump to Star Trek. One of the props, most popular props, actually the original series. This is the um, hand phaser, phaser type two. Phaser type one is this part, which on this model doesn't come off, but normally would come off and be a little separate phaser. I believe this one has two settings. Push the right button. There we go. And the other setting. A little in more intense beam. If you can see a light in the front, it's actually going off. Very cool. Um, batteries are, uh, I believe they're double A's. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple prop. Let's jump to the next generation. Now, they have their version of the Phaser Type 1. This was a toy that came out by, I believe, Galoo. Let me double check. Paramount Pictures, oh, it doesn't say. But it's a way oversized. This is like three times the size of what they used on the set. But it does. It does blow up things. I think there's another setting. Yeah, that's the, the normal firing setting. You see it lights up. Let me show you the top. Oh, did I show you the top of the details? I'm going so fast. I um, just show the top of the uh, the settings, the trigger um, for both of them. Yeah, I give you a little perspective of both. The butts, the bottoms. Very cool. Okay. Now, they went on to what they call the Dust Busters on the next generation. This was another toy, I believe, um, uh, Playmates who came out with. It's the Dust Buster. Show you the top, kind of a stickers for settings. Um, this was in the 90s. So uh, eBay, uh, probably the best place you're going to find one of these. But it also 
of the settings. Push another button. We'll continue. And then, you know, if you got to clean around the house, it's, it's a dust buster. Just kidding. It's a prop toy, uh, pretty well detailed and closer to actual size of the props as opposed to the that other one they released. I guess they thought kids needed, you know, two hands to hold it when it actually was a little kind of, little kind of tiny thing. Um, okay, let's stick with, uh, no, let's jump to, yeah, we'll go stick with Star Trek. Um, Star Trek, the motion picture came out. And as you can hear, I've activated something. And they originally released this version um, from Star Trek, uh, the motion picture. As you can see, it's uh, pretty basic. It's got the clip, which clips onto the belt right here, which they didn't have for the movies, and the top. Now, I believe, no, I think I just have to fire it. So set it, you know, this is your setting. So when I hit the trigger, okay, open a little couple lights there on top, you can see it. Change the setting, it only has two settings. And again, lights on top. So this was from the motion picture and kind of their first release of this phaser type. Uh, it was the first time they released a phaser after the original series and the animated series. But then Star Trek two and three came out and they released a really cool version because as you know, in the, if you didn't see the movies, their phasers had a, a lot more to do um, than what was there. So um, I have this one. Kind of like the same model, it's got the silver strip uh, in the back. And like the original series, there's a phaser type one and this handle or grip is phaser type two. Right now, that's, that's what I accidentally activated. So let me, okay, I just shut it off. Let me turn it on again. Simple touch, it's really cool. Now, on the face of it, can you see the flashing light there? Okay, I'm gonna set it to setting one. Setting one is this light right here. And when I fire, okay, setting two, the light jumps from here to here. Second one. And jumping to setting three, as you can see, jumps from, oops, make sure you can see it, two to three. See, one, two, three. Make sure I know how to fire it. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to four. Fourth, and then the lights go two, three, four, one, two, three, four, in the last setting. Make sure you get a... Okay, now another little fun feature that this gun has is um, if you hold this button and this top button here together, notice everything lights up. That's self-destruct mode. So when I do hit the trigger, okay, supposedly I blew up. There you go. Um, like my new glasses, by the way. Anyway, they're uh, popping in and out, I noticed. Um, but this has the phaser type two, which releases the phaser type one, which is basically the hand phaser. So same principle, activate, turn it on. Uh, you want which setting? Let's go to the first setting. The light goes on and triggers up here in the middle. So again, setting two, fire. Setting three, one, watch it climb up, two, three. Very cool, and the last setting, setting four. Basically the entire uh, programming is in this little handset um, and attached to the other one, only uh, with the button that activates it on the handle. But it too has, if you hold this button, and if you hold this button, everything stays on. And, uh-oh, red light, we're in trouble.
Okay, blew myself up twice. And it's magnetic, so it just pops right in place and let you know. Okay, that's Star Trek. Let's jump to uh, one of my favorite home shows, Space 1990. Well, their weaponry and their props. Um, this, this one I made. Got the pieces. Uh, it's actually uh, made of resin, so it's very solid. Every, every piece is solid. The nozzles are solid. The, uh, the side clips are solid. Um, the gun is really cool. The trigger, up here is the trigger. Push that up and down, and then up here is the settings. Right now it's on stun. Move it forward, it goes to kill. You can barely read, barely read that. I think, yeah, kill, and then stun. Green for good, red for bad. Uh, the four barrels are there. You fight. It's called the Stun Gun. Series of Space 1999 Martin Lando Bane. Just amazing uh, detail on the on the painting. I did that. All the barrels have a different color, which coincide with the buttons on the side. Um, to control the setting. The other prop they had that I also made, again, very solid piece, is what's called the Com Lock. Um, as you can see, everything is detailed painted. The uh, the rimming, the uh, the, the button tree, button ring on the side. The switches, um, the back with the belt clip, um, the bottom, this is the part where it, it reads to the doors and such. And here's the side, the identify. Every Tom Lock is identified, and that's the that's me actually, uh, many moons ago, well, not that long ago when I made this. And of course the TV screen, it says Alpha Moon Base, Alpha Ready. So I love this. These these props were amazing, Space 1999. You got to watch the show. Uh, finally, I want to close with uh, a before and end. Okay, I talked about uh, kits that you can get made of resin, or some people print them, you know, plastic uh, printers, the three D printers that print things. Well, here are the parts for a version of what is <clears throat> what is Han Solo's blaster. Now, these are the parts that come when I got them. Um, let's see the detail: gun, uh, gun body, basically a little bit of the barrel, and then um, the uh, rest of the barrel is on the, uh, on the left there, screen left, I believe, and then the handle, that's the handle, the part with the lines here and a couple of the sight grips and all that other stuff. That's what it looks like before. So this is the part where you put it all together and you prime it with a special paint primer, and then you paint it <clears throat> to the base color, what it is, and then you paint the details, the other colors on top of it. Now, when you do something like that, which is why I saved it for last, um, if you do it really well, you'll get something that looks like this. And I use this for cosplay when I do Han Solo. Yes, I'm Harrison Ford. No, it's a really cool costume. The whole this is from uh, the very first movie, the one from 1977, called Star Wars. Yes, it was called Star Wars. Anyway, here it comes. This is what it looks like when you do it right. Now, what's nice is oh my god, it's how incredible is that? The detail, the barrel. The, uh, the sight. You can actually look through the sight. It's kind of cool. Um, oh, can I show you? Where's the hole? There we go. You can look right through the sight. The trigger it fits comfortably. The barrel, the handle fits very comfortably. Show you both sides. This is something, and I even have the holster. So when it sits in the holster, the barrel is sticking out just like on so Very cool. This is one of my pride and joys. Uh, took me a while because um, you know you got to glue it, make sure it's very solid. Like I said, and you prime it with a particular paint. And this one, I don't know if you can tell, it's a kind of a multi-shaded. This is kind of a silver black. This is all black. This is a metallic black uh, with a gray black up here. And then the handle, of course, is kind of got that wood finish. And I gave it a little uh, um, spray burst uh, to show. You know, it doesn't look like it's pristine. So my console has been used. Um, there's all kinds of techniques you can use. But the detail on this uh, is amazing. Uh, relatively cheap if you buy the kits. You can buy them fully constructed, but they can run between uh, $150 and $200 to have someone else do it for you. But the kits can run like $39 to $49. You get all the parts and pieces you put together yourself. Um, and that's the kind of quality you can get. How cool is that? So, <laughs> very cool. It looks good on the green screen. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, so let's go back. Let's do this right. There we go. Here we go. 
Thanks again for watching. Um, I don't know if you've watched uh, some of my other shows here. Make sure you subscribe. Um, I do have other shows called The Geek Authority Show, where I actually talk to actors, writers, directors, producers, cosplayers, convention goers, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and we talk about uh, whatever the topic is. And then uh, there's another show I do, uh, brand new, called Talk About, where a subject is picked, and some friends and fans and I get together and discuss what's going on um, on that subject with video, usually some some uh, memorabilia or pictures that we, we like to show, um, <clears throat> as well as the other show I have, The Unboxing, uh, The Geek Authority, where I open new stuff for the first time, and you see it, and I see it, we both see it for the very first time, because I just got it shipped or, or delivered in. And stuff that I've uh, I've purchased and or people have sent me to show because it's brand new material. Um, anyway, uh, don't forget to click the bell. Let you know when I have new videos. Thanks again for watching. I hope you liked the Geek Authority's Mysterious Chamber of Collectibles. Uh, check out my other videos and see what other kind of stuff I uh, do and collect and and have. And that's a lot of fun. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.